Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for another video. So in this video, I'm going to be covering some tips uh, when it comes to feeding moray eels. So I've had my moray eels for about four months now, and over that time, I've learned quite a lot about feeding them and uh, you know some tips and tricks, and uh, collected them all and wanted to share them with you in this video, and I hope uh, you will learn something. Okay, so the first tip I want to share is that you should feed your moray eels a variety of food. Um, that way, if you ever run out of one food, you always have other foods that, are, that they are used to eating. So you will never have any trouble feeding your eels. Uh, but to be honest, my moray eels have been eating pretty much anything and everything. So, and same thing with the lionfish. So, uh, but just to be safe, make sure they are used to eating a variety of foods. And uh, another reason to do that is to avoid something called thiaminase poisoning. And uh, so there are some types of fish, for example, smelt fish, uh, that are known to have a higher amount of that uh, in them. And if you were to only feed this type of fish, um, it could accumulate in the eel's bodies and uh, would cause problems. So definitely try to avoid feeding only one type of food. Try to mix it up if possible. And uh, for example, for these frozen seafood mix, uh, they're really great, but uh, you need to make sure that you remove this uh, imitation crab because uh, this is not real crab, has nothing seafood related in it, so that should be removed. Um, so yeah, basically try to avoid feeding them anything that is cooked, anything that is seasoned, or you know has any kind of uh, additives in them. Um, here we have some boiled uh, shelled uh, clams and uh, I bought this by mistake. I didn't see that it was boiled and I feed it sparingly to the um, lionfish. But uh, when this runs out, I will not buy any more of them. Also, when you feed something like shrimp, make sure that you do not peel it. So I found out that the shell in the shrimp contains a lot of min minerals and that is really uh, helpful in the development of the eels and the growth of their bones. So yeah, leave it just as is and feed it just as is. The next thing I want to mention is when you prepare your food, do not thaw the food in water because if you do that, you could lose a lot of vitamins that are in the food. So always thaw it, you know, leave it out in the, uh, in the open and then when it's thawed, put it in the fridge, but never thaw it in, in water. So I recently thought of these uh, spiny gobies and uh, yeah I did not add any water I just let it thaw like that and then drain some of the excess water and that way uh, they have as many nutrients in them as possible. So my next tip is uh, even though you feed a variety of foods you can still uh, have problems with uh, nutrient deficiency so one thing that you can do is you can enrich your seafood using uh, a concentrate like this, which is basically a bunch of vitamins and minerals. And the way I do that is I use a syringe and I basically um, inject some of it into the mouth of one of the feeder fish and then uh, make sure it's in the stomach, make sure it doesn't come out of the gills. Uh, so make sure you push the syringe, the needles all the way into the stomach and inject this fish with some uh, additional vitamins and then feed that to the eels. Okay, now we are in front of the aquarium and if you haven't seen any previous videos, I have a giant moray eel and I also have a tessellata which is hidden down in the cave back there. So pretty hard to see right now. Um, but yeah, these are the two eels. Uh, they will be going into a bigger aquarium. Uh, the giant Mori will get to 10 feet, so don't worry, he will be in a new aquarium pretty soon. And for tank mates, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have one lionfish here and another lionfish there. And here goes the eel. I think he knows uh, we are going to be feeding them pretty soon. So yeah, these are the eels that I will be showing you today how I'm feeding them. When it comes to the actual feeding, what I like to do to protect myself is to wear a stainless steel glove. So this is something usually used by cooks. And uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because, number one, these eels have very sharp teeth and they also have very poor eyesight. So it's uh, quite 
uh, possible that uh, the eel believes he's grabbing food, but he eventually, you know, overshoots the target and ends up biting my finger. So I'm wearing that glove uh, for my protection for that. And also the lionfish. Um, if you ever seen a lionfish eat, you know that they are basically open their mouths really wide and then create a, you know, a vacuum to suck in the food. And uh, what happens sometimes is that the, uh, the food doesn't really get sucked in because I didn't time the release of the food uh, correctly. And then it will just sink. And then I'm kind of tempted to just grab it with my hand. And uh, uh, yeah, if I ever was to then accidentally um, get stung by him, I would be protected uh, with my gloves. So this is a safety precaution that I adopted. Feeding utensils include just a pair of tongs. And then I also have a really long feeding tongue. So if I ever have to reach an eel further down, if for some reason he doesn't come out, um, I can do it that way. But usually they come out, come to the top and I don't really need to use that one. All right, so I now uh, I'm on top of the aquarium and here we can already see the eel or eels coming. <laughs> so usually the eels actually wait a little bit and uh, the lionfish are always waiting on, you know, on top of the rim first. And uh, for that reason, what I uh, decided to start doing is whenever I feed the lionfish, I make sure that I feed them really small pieces, uh, pieces that you, they can swallow in one shot. Uh, so nothing sticking out of the mouth and that is because if the one of the moray eels smells that food that is sticking out of the lionfish's mouth and tries to grab it and due to their poor eyesight accidentally overbites then uh, that could be deadly for the lionfish. So I made sure to never uh, feed anything that doesn't fit in its mouth. And the same thing is actually true for the eels as well. So one time I fed them a piece of fish that was quite long that they wouldn't, um, you know, swallow whole. I think it was the giant Mori who I gave it to. And then because he was still, you know, working on uh, swallowing it, the Tessalata actually saw that and took a bite of it as well. And then it had a really uh, scary uh, tug of war going on that... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if one, if the Tesselata had tried to, you know, grab more, more of that piece of fish, he could have bitten the nose of the giant Mori and that could have, you know, been catastrophic. So I make sure that I feed one eel at a time if possible and only give them a fish they can swallow whole. And these um, spiny gobies, they are really long, but they're actually not too long. So the eels can gulp them down really quickly. Okay, so I prepared a couple pieces of fish uh, with that uh, vitamin um, supplement that I showed you earlier. And I'm basically going to try to have an eel grab it and uh, hopefully swallow it in one piece. So it's not easy to film this. Let me see if I can do... Oh, here we go. Wow. Oh, see? That's the tug of war that I'm trying to avoid. And uh, thankfully nothing happened. <laughs> Let's try another piece. Hopefully nothing happens. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. Giant Mori for the win. So for the next couple of pieces, I'm not going to film this for safety reasons. Um, so I'm just going to be right back with you once I fed them and uh, then we can conclude this video. Okay, this is it for the feeding. Uh, each eel ate about four spiny gobies, which is a sizable portion. And uh, yeah, back to, you know, fighting between eels over food. So if you prepare something like shrimp, which is you know, uh, rounded, not straight, like a, like a goby. Uh, make sure you cut it into straight pieces as, as best as you can, just to avoid that problem. When it comes to the amount of food, um, you basically should stop feeding uh, if they no longer accept food. So let them eat as much as they want. And uh, as soon as they stop accepting food, that's basically it. 
And uh, when it comes to how many times you should feed them, you should actually feed your eels only once or twice a week or even less. So this can be tricky when you have tank mates because tank mates mostly uh, whatever you have in there um, needs to feed more often and when you put food in the water it, the eels can smell it as well. And uh, if an eel goes long without food, let's say you're on day six out of seven, uh, and, you know, the longer the eel has to wait for food, the more attractive the tank mates look uh, as a potential food source. So I'm actually feeding my eels uh, twice a week to avoid any aggression, but um, I may, you know, one day have to get rid of the lionfish so I can feed them only once a week. Uh, because that will also greatly help with maintenance and to keep the waste down. So I actually, uh, when it comes to when you should feed them, um, not the time of day, but you know, the day of the week, uh, I do weekly water changes and I try to feed my eels two to three days before the day of a water change so that, you know, they uh, get rid of all the poop that is accumulated based on these big portions that they eat, you know, the day before the water change and then it is really you know, easy for me to clean it all up and then, or for the protein skimmer, and then I clean the protein skimmer. But uh, yeah, that has helped a lot in uh, keeping this water clean. So even though it looks pretty murky right now, but that's because they stirred up a bunch of sand because they're just very, you know, ferocious eaters. So obviously these eels are predators that are used to hunting uh, for their food in the wild. And um, what you can do, uh, I don't do it, um, but if you want to help them maintain their hunting skills, you can feed live feeder fish. Um, unfortunately, the most affordable feeder fish for saltwater um, are the damsels, which are you know seven to eight dollars each, and they maybe actually be too small for the eels to uh, actually hunt. So I've seen some uh, eel aquariums where damsels are living happily together with the eels because they're just too small. Uh, so if you were to buy a bigger saltwater fish just for the purpose of feeding them to the eels, it would cost you quite a lot of money. Um, a lot of people um, try to use mollies, um, usually sold as freshwater fish, but if you acclimate them really slowly over like uh, three days or so, uh, you can actually have mollies in a saltwater aquarium and that could be a potential good live uh, food source for even the lionfish. But like I said, I've, I've never fed them live fish. Um, I don't want to play, you know, God <laughs> and decide when someone something dies and when not. So I just keep uh, to, uh, I still just stick with frozen food. So the only reason I would consider feeding live food is if an eel goes on a hunger strike. And that has actually happened with the Tessalata eel. Um, I had to miss one day of water change and because of uh, oh, one water change schedule. So I uh, changed the water after two weeks and then the nitrates were just so high that the eel stopped eating. Uh, the giant mori continued to eat, um, but the Tessalata stopped eating and it took a while uh, for him to eat again. It took about a week, and actually it took about a month and a half. So yeah, um, as you saw earlier, he actually just started eating about a couple days ago, and um, all the, earlier you saw how aggressive he was. And I think it has to do with the water temperature. It's pretty warm today in Southern California, and um, I have you know a lot of electronics here, so that, uh, you know, I, contribute to the heat in this room particularly. So we are now at 79 degrees and I try to keep it more at 74 and, but it's still acceptable. I don't need to turn on the AC. It can save some electricity. But uh, I think a good tip on getting your eels to feed is to raise the temperature in the water because that will increase their metabolism. And uh, yeah, that will make them hungry and that will be, make them more likely to eat again. Okay guys, so this is it for this video. I hope you, l you learned something and uh, in the next video or one of the uh, videos coming soon, I will probably be talking about a new aquarium. So I'm closing in on a new aquarium for the uh, giant mori and the tessalata, mainly because of the giant mori, because it gets to 10 feet. And uh, I, I did notice some aggression between the eels lately. So it's time to um, get this taken care of and uh, it will be really exciting. And uh, hopefully you will, um, 
you know, follow along when this happens. And until then, thank you for watching and have a good day.